welcome to Enter the Glory Zone with me, Dr. Edith Davis, on 94.1 FM, Wave 94. Spiritual believers and listeners, today I would like to talk about abiding. Abiding in Christ Jesus. And what does that really mean? The first thing that comes to my mind is being deceived. Sometimes I have to check and ask God, am I being deceived? Deception is a cruel thing because it has people believing that they're doing right when they're really doing wrong. One of the most terrifying parts of the book of Revelation is the scene where Christians People who have given their life supposedly up for the Lord and they're doing the things of the Lord are told by Christ Jesus, depart from me for I never knew you. I never yada you. I never had intimacy with you. I did not intimately know you. You did not abide in me. And these are pastors. These are deacons. These are nuns. These are priests. These are popes. These are people who have supposedly sold out to Christ Jesus. They actually state that they prophesied in his name. They healed the sick in his name. They raised the dead in his name. How can you have such power and authority and not belong to Christ Jesus? Interesting question. Obviously, these people were deceived because they did not understand what it truly means to abide in Christ Jesus, to abide in the vine. There's another um, pastor that I um, periodically listen to. Um, Wheaton, I think her name is. She's in um, Southern, I think she's somewhere in California. She has a program called The Ramp. And she did a excellent teaching on abiding in Christ Jesus. And what does it mean to be a Christian? And she basically said that most Christians think there are three categories, which is a deception. She says there's really only two categories. There's not a three, three categories. And she talks about the individual who does not want Christ Jesus in their life, not interested in Christ Jesus in their life, not interested in being saved. They don't want nothing to do with God. They don't like God. They are just anti-God, anti-Christ Jesus, anti-Holy Spirit, and they don't want to have nothing to do with them, and they live their lives. Those individuals. Then there's the other extreme. These individuals love Christ Jesus, love the Father, love the Lord God, Holy Spirit, are totally sold out to Christ Jesus. They abide in Christ Jesus. They're, they dedicate everything that they have, every the essence of themselves, everything, their destiny, they give it all to Christ Jesus. They're on fire for Christ Jesus. A lot of people categorize those Christians as the, um, I guess you, the weirdos, the holy rollers, you don't have to, you don't have to do all that, right? <sighs> the sold out, the extreme, the radical Christian. And then there's the category which people call the normal Christian. The normal Christian is not like those radical Christians. The normal Christian goes to church every now and then or whenever it's convenient. The normal Christian reads their word every now and then whenever it's convenient. They never they never get out of order or say something that's politically incorrect. Um, they 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 may they actually um, can't really be distinguished from people who are not sold out to Christ Jesus. They they fit in. Um, they fit in with the world really well, but they are Christians and they have accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The issue is they are deceived because there's really only that 
extreme radical Christian, that Christian that's the holy roller, that Christian that's sold out and given their whole life to Christ Jesus, that's the normal Christian in Acts, right? In Acts, the book of Acts that Luke wrote in defense of Paul, the great apostle that wrote the majority of the New Testament. Yes, they are. the real, And this and Jesus himself states in the word that he rather you be. We call those Christians carnal Christians, carnal Christians, carnal Christians are the Christians that operate in the physical realm. They make their decisions based on what they see, what they hear, what they smell, what they taste, what they feel. The carnal Christian, they don't they don't walk in the supernatural. They don't walk have a spiritual walk. They every now and then they might slip and fornicate if they're single. That means have sex outside of marriage. Every, and you know, and we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no remorse for it. They they think it's okay. Or they may watch pornography. Or they may tell a white lie. What is a white lie? <laughs> A little white lie. Or they may not stand up for what is right. They keep silent. And they let people who are the sold out Christians be persecuted. Mm. There's a deception. They are deceived. They are in danger of being in the category where Jesus says to them, depart from me for I never knew you. Can you imagine spending your whole life on this planet thinking that you're a Christian and you're not abiding? Jesus says in the word himself, he says, I'd rather you be hot like the radical Christian, sold out, dedicate their whole life to God or the cold. I don't believe in God. I don't trust Christ Jesus. Don't want Christ Jesus. Not interested in Christ Jesus. God, whether you be that or hot, he calls the carnal Christian. He calls these people, these pew warmers. He calls them loop warm. And he says, I would rather spew you out of my mouth. Now, I like to watch um, a program um, drive through drive through uh, history. It basically contextualizes the Word of God. It it actually shows you the what was going on during the time of Jesus and the cities and the people and what was going on. And when Jesus made this statement. There was a town, there was a town um, upstream that had beautiful, cold, crystal, beautiful waterfall, beautiful, pure aquifer water. And then there was another town downstream where the water was um, um, hot springs. There was a hot spring. So there was a there was a hot spring and then there was this cool, crystal, pure water. And there was a town in between where the hot spring water and the cold crystal water met. And that water ended up um, being, uh, had a lot of impurities in it. It was very yucky, had a lot of parasites and stuff in it. And um, if you put it in a glass, it would kind of be a slight brownish tinge to it. (laughs) And these people actually drank this water. And it was lukewarm and it was putrid. It was awful. And Jesus was describing this water. And he said, I'd rather spew you out of my mouth. And he was describing a people that do not abide. When you abide in the vine, when you abide in Christ Jesus, once you are saved and born again, then that means that you obey his word, regardless if you like it or don't like it. You obey his word, regardless if you are in agreement or not in agreement with it. If God said it, then it's this done to the done done. It's a done deal. I've got a really good girlfriend who has had a call it the upper room ministry 
Gwen. Gwen Lee, she is just awesome. And I've known Gwen for over several decades. And Gwen is a woman of her word. If she says it, it is done. Her and her word are one. And she has a stellar relationship with Christ Jesus. She has been prayer minister for great um, generals in the kingdom of God, such as Charles Stanley, um, the mayor of Houston. I mean, this woman knows how to pray, but she's also a woman of integrity. She's a woman of her word. If Gwen gives you her word, it's a done deal. And I think about her and then I think about other people who words are worthless. If they tell you something, you can't count on it. And when Jesus is talking about whether you are hot or cold, whether you're in or out, he's tired of these lukewarm Christians that have no power. How are you going to have power when you sit around people blaspheming the name of God, tearing down the name of God, sitting watching pornography and you just got out of the bed with somebody. You got all these issues and you're not repentant. It's not that you cannot do these things and not be saved, but you have to have a repentant heart. Repentance means I, it's not about being sorry. I tell my kids all the time, I'm not interested in sorry. I'm interested in repentance. I'm interested in are you ready to make a 180 degree turn from where you are and go the other direction? That's what repentance means. Repentance means I'm headed in the wrong direction. I'm making a U-turn and I'm going back towards the light. I'm going back towards the word of God. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, I pray I don't fall again. But if I do, I'm going to get up. I'm going to wash myself with the word of God. I'm going to repent with my heart. And then I'm going to already receive the forgiveness. Jesus already died for every sin that I have committed, past, present, and future. I'm just positioning myself to be used by God. God is done. He wants his bride, the church, to get up and be about his business. And that and the way you are about God's business is abiding. Yes, abiding, meaning I am in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is in me. I will obey regardless of whether or not I like it, regardless of I feel it. It's not important. It's not important what I feel or how I feel. What is important is that I oh, what? obey, obey God, obey his word. His word is supreme. He is my source. And if he tells me to love my enemies, I'm going to love my enemies. If he tells me to do good for evil, I'm going to do good for evil. If he asks me to forgive in advance before people even do anything to me, forgive them. I'm going to do it because my God has asked me to do this. If he wants me not to be offended, I am not going to be offended because he has asked me. It is not about how I feel. It is not about what I think. It is not about my will, but thy will be done. That is abiding. And yes, there is a scripture in Roman 9 that I do read all the time. And it does say that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 3, right? New King James version, right? But the key word there is the heart. And they're not talking about this heart up in your chest. They're talking about your spiritual heart. That heart that God says guard and protect at all costs because out of that comes rivers of living water. Out of that decides your destiny. What you believe and think in that spiritual heart is what you are. You believe what you think. What you think you become. What you become is what you think. Thinking and believing. Thinking and believing in the spiritual heart. And if you don't, if you're just 
confessing with lip service, you're not saved. But if you believe in your heart, you immediately became a new creation in Christ Jesus, sealed, vacuum tight, sealed by the Holy Spirit. And Christ Jesus' spirit is in you and your spirit and the Lord God, Holy Spirit, and you and the Father and Christ Jesus and the Lord Lord God, Holy Spirit are one. Abide. That's real abiding. Abiding is spending time, intimate time, time alone with just you and the Father, you and the Son, you and the Lord God, Holy Spirit. Intimacy, just just sitting there and soaking in the presence of God, reading the Word of God, looking for something to leap off the page for you and you alone, something that God has for you, and meditating on that throughout the day. Chewing on it like a cow on his cud and getting every piece of nutrient, every piece of power and strength out of it so that it propels you into your special destiny. Abiding, abiding, abiding means obedience. Abiding means obeying. Abiding means that I belong to you Daddy God, you hey vahe. I belong to you, Yahshua Mashiach, Christ Jesus. I belong to you, Ruh HaKadosh, Lord God, Holy Spirit. And whatever you tell me to do, I will do. I will go where you tell me to go. Now, this is where you got to be careful. This is where you have to have an intimacy uh, with Christ Jesus and you have to recognize his voice. Because you got another voice that's trying to penetrate you, that's bombarding your mind, just like God is trying to get word into your mind, get get your mind transformed with the word of God. And his name is Satan. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And guess what? He comes disguised as an angel of light. What may appear to be good and right may actually be a trap from Satan and evil. That's why you must pray for the discernment of spirits. You must, you must pray for the discernment of spirit because you can be deceived. A matter of fact, in the last days, God has to come back because even the elect, even people that know the word of God, meditate on the word of God, can be de- can be deceived by the deceptive spirits that are coming to planet earth abiding so spiritual believers and listeners you need to examine yourself you need to find out are you abiding is god your only source are you willing to surrender all to god Joni Lamb went through a critical part in her life where she surrendered it all to God. And look what God did with her and her husband, Marcus Lamb. They have a awesome ministry called Daystar. The same thing with Matt, right? And Laurie Crouch, right? They also sold out to Christ Jesus. And they have a ministry called Trinity Broadcast Network. These men and women who are making a difference for the kingdom of God are those radical Christians that you're talking about, are those ones that are totally sold out. And one day, if I'm not already there, and I believe I am, I'm one of those radical Christians. We have a prayer walk. It is November the 1st. We're going to meet at 2.30 p.m. at the steps of the Capitol. Please join us as we do the Jericho walk against the powers of darkness of all this death and destruction, all this killing. Recently, there was another shooting at the county fair. A young 18-year-old boy died. Spiritual believers, members of the body of Christ, God has had enough. He has authorized his bride to stand up against the powers of darkness. He has authorized us to say no more. You must go. Death, sickness, disease, lack, poverty, all these maladies of this planet need to be put under our feet along with the originator of all these issues, Satan and his demons. Spiritual believers. You 
need to ask the Lord, am I being deceived? Lord, am I abiding in you? There's not three categories of Christians. There's not, they're not two categories of Christians. There's only one. And if you're not abiding, then you're not a Christian. And you belong in the other category. You need to find out, what is my destiny? Why have you left me here on planet Earth, Daddy God, our Father, you hey, by hey? What is it that you want me to do for the kingdom? And get about your father's business. Ask for the second baptism of the Holy Spirit because you can't do anything without the power of the Lord God, Holy Spirit. You cannot. Christ Jesus himself, who was the word of God, made flesh, basically decloaked himself, didn't give up his deity, but did not use his deity. He walked as a man, the son of man on this earth, filled with the Holy Spirit. So with this, this is how we should be walking. So we too can raise people from the dead. We too can tell the storm, peace be still. By the way, I've done that not once, not twice, but several times. I have said, told hurricanes, move on. I have spoken to the Storms and said, peace be still. And they obeyed the Christ Jesus that is in me. Spiritual believers, check and make sure you're not deceived. Check and make sure that you are abiding. Faith comes by the word that you know. If you don't know the word of God, if you don't start developing an intimate relationship with Christ Jesus and then with the father and then with the son, because if you know Christ Jesus, then you know the father and you know the Lord God, Holy Spirit. Jesus is the embodiment, the full embodiment of the fullness of the Godhead on earth. When you saw Jesus, you saw the father. Spiritual believers, make sure that you are abiding in Christ Jesus for real. And if you are abiding, then you know you are obedient to his holy word. I was listening to one of the leaders that um, teachers that I really like, um, Andrew Womack, and he had a panel of um, his teachers from the Karis Bible College. And one of the teachers was a young lady and She was just, it just was awesome because basically she caught on fire for the Lord at a very young age. And um, upon graduating from high school, she went to Karis Bible College and graduated from Karis Bible College and immediately went to Russia, went to the coldest and most extreme region of the world, just west of the Arctic Circle. That's where she lived and was about her father's business. And she was a missionary and she taught the word of God. She gave, told the gospel to the people in the region. And one of the interesting things that I was just awesome is that's where she met her husband who happened to be American. Also Russian mission. He was a, he was American doing missionary to the Russians. And so they got married and had that wonderful life and they ate reindeer. (laughs) It was, it's just, and, but one of the things that they did was they, the leaders of the world, um, princes and chiefs, um, kings would send their, their children to this part of the country also to learn uh, and to, and what they would do is they, these young people were future leaders of their countries. And in the evenings, they went to the Bible, um, the Karis Bible um program that they had there and then they went on to be dispersed all over the world and one of those leaders in um in africa which was at one time called um south africa but no longer is south africa he basically was positioned to to follow in his footsteps and to you know to run the country or whatever he was destined to do. And he said, no, this is not what God is calling me to. And now he's running um, the largest Karis Bible college um, in Africa. 
right now. <laughs> All because of the seed that was planted in Russia, west of the Arctic Circle. <laughs> this young lady was used by God. This young lady, at an early age, heard the voice of God and obeyed, went and spent many, many years in Russia teaching and preaching and about the gospel, teaching the word of God to, to young people. And these young people now are dispersed all over the world, making profound differences for the kingdom of God. Because Daddy God, Abba Father, you, you, hey, vai, hey, Lord God, Christ Jesus, Yahshua, Mashiach, and Lord God, Ruha Kadash, Lord God, Holy Spirit, wish that no man, woman, or child should perish and that all would be saved. That is the desire of God's heart, but he will not violate your will. You must willingly, willingly, willingly receive the blood of Christ Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Upon accepting his blood and the, his body for healing and health, riches and wealth, all the provisions that God has for you on this earth, Yes, she abides and she bears much fruit and God prunes her and uses her and she will bear more fruit. If you are abiding, you should be bearing fruit. If you are abiding, your life is not your own. And guess what? It's fun. It's exciting. A lot of people think immediately when you say, oh, I've got to give myself to God and I'm not going to have any more fun. You're going to have more fun than you could ever have if you will line up with God's holy word and abide in him. I wish I was got to go to west of the Arctic Circle. I mean, it's amazing. The people who have sold out to Christ Jesus and you see the extraordinary lives that they have traveling all over the world, touching people all over the world. Oh, it's not something that you will regret. Spiritual believer, check yourself. Make sure that you're not deceived because there's only one category of Christian. There's not two. Make sure you're not lukewarm. Make sure that you are abiding. Once again, I want to read Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Thank you for once again joining me on Enter the Glory Zone on 94.1 FM, Wave 94, Dr. Edith Davis, Enter the Glory Zone.